with this year's Arkansas Derby. Let's take a look at that field. He had 11 of them signed on. Two favorites, though. Really took the lion's share of the money in Omaha Beach, as well as improbable, both Southern California imports. One goes out for Richard Mandela. One goes out for Bob Baffert. It was going to be interesting to see how the dynamics of the race would unfold with improbable sporting blinkers for the first time, gets Jose Ortiz for the first time, and we know what Mike Smith and Omaha Beach are capable of. We saw that in the Rebel, one of the split divisions, in his most recent start. What you got was a, a pretty entertaining horse race, but really a pretty authoritative victory for the horse Omaha Beach. Let's take a look at the stretch run of this year's Arkansas Derby. Long range toddy. Then comes Laughing Fox, Omaha Beach. Improbable in second. Omaha Beach is now a length in front. Improbable gonna try him one more time. Omaha Beach, improbable to the outside. Omaha Beach just won't let him by yet. Improbable second, Omaha Beach, yes! The 83rd Arkansas. Omaha Beach gets the job done over improbable. The favorites run one, two. Country House rounds out your trifecta at odds of eight to one. Let's take a look at the winner. Omaha Beach never added the money. In seven lifetime starts, six times in the exact three of those victories, over 1.1 million in career earnings. Owned by Fox Hill Farms Incorporated, trained by Richard Mandela, bred by Charming Syndicate in Kentucky. Written to victory by Mike Smith, and you can see the pedigree at the bottom of his horse card. He's by Warfront out of a Seeking the Gold Mare named Charming. Now, impressive enough visually, the figures make it look that much better. From a buyer standpoint, a 101 buyer, a 121 pace adjusted time form US rating. Interesting thing to note. The raw number for time form is a 123, so it's even faster. Uh, Improbable earns a 99 buyer, 120 pace adjusted time form US rating. The numbers all seem to check out for the most part. Um, this was really all around a very impressive effort from Omaha Beach. It was a brilliant ride from Mike Smith. I've seen some people over the weekend talking about how you know Smith really, really made life difficult for Jose Ortiz and Improbable by not allowing Improbable out going down past the stands for the first time going into the first turn. Jose wanted to get him extricated from down in there amongst horses with all that slop being kicked back in his face. And it's been well documented. The outside is probably where you wanted to be at Oaklawn all day on Saturday with that sloppy sealed track. Uh, obviously, the conditions weren't great, but occasionally from those sort of circumstances, uh, biases can develop. And perhaps outside is where you wanted to be. Uh, improbable. They tried to get him out there. Mike Smith hemmed him in beautifully. And it's become a thing for Omaha Beach. He has this sort of brush right to the front where take no prisoners. Uh, reminds me a little bit of when Abel Tasman was at her best. You know, we initially, myself included, and I know there were a number of other people that thought this way as well, you know, we looked at it and said, boy, she she's her own worst enemy. You know, okay, you can do this every once in a while, but realistically, are you going to be able to continue to make these just bold brushes down the backside right up to the front and be able to hold off the horses that you're right there with and any of the, the confirmed closers that are really, really quality? Um, Omaha Beach, he does these things, and he just doesn't stop. He just continues to go on and on and on. And I'll say it again, I initially had thought, first, maybe he was a little bit of an underachiever. Second, maybe one, one turn was going to be his game. Third, maybe he was just a sloppy track freak. Well, he kind of allayed some of those fears and squashed some of those questions. Two starts back in the Rebel. Then he comes back here and does this. And I think by anyone's estimation, he's taken down two of the bigger names as far as the three-year-olds are concerned. And I think it is, maybe it seems sort of elementary to consider this a major piece, but he took down two Baffert horses, two of Baffert's best horses. Um, I, you know, it's difficult to, to do anything, to, it's difficult to do things more impressively than this ha horse has on his way to Kentucky. Uh, he has the connections with Richard Mandela and Mike Smith. Now, Mike Smith has a decision to make. I posted a, a Twitter poll, and it was overwhelmingly in favor of Omaha Beach. I said, if you were Mike Smith, who would you choose to ride? Would you ride Omaha Beach, or would you ride the Santa Anita Derby winner and Roadster? Seems like many people just, just think it's a foregone conclusion, and perhaps it is. Um, this was a very, very impressive effort. You look at it any way you want to chop it down. Uh, the fractions, 23, 47, and 2 for a half, 12, and 2 for three quarters. Stop the clock in 49 and 4. The thing I love the most, though, for each of the top two, Omaha Beach and Improbable, they both finished in the same final eighth. They both came home in 1238. Again, I've talked about that final quarter mile in Kentucky. You want that to be 
somewhere right around 26, preferably sub 26 seconds. If you just want to project forward, 1238 tack on an extra there, well below that. So uh, all around, it just seems like a very, very strong effort. I am not suggesting this is the case. And listen to what I'm saying here. I'm not saying that this is what I believe, but I think you should play devil's advocate every once in a while and say, okay, as, as awesome as this effort was from Omaha Beach, when you compare that to Improbable, Improbable who threw a fit in the starting gate, which is a concern all in its own right, but he threw a fit in the starting gate, needed to be backed out, came back, and he was very restless. Who knows how much energy he expended at that point. Can't get him out into the clear where he wants to run, which is where Omaha Beach eventually got out to. Uh, so Omaha Beach was the one that got the jump on Improbable and sat in the position that you wanted to be, out in the clear free with run. Uh, rounding the far turn, Improbable comes up to Omaha Beach, and this is a, a credit to Omaha Beach. He doesn't let horses by. He digs in and continues on with it. But for it only to be, and I say only, for it only to be a length difference, if I'm playing devil's advocate, can't you make the argument that given the circumstances with Improbable, first time equipment change, first time with blinkers on, first time with a new rider, throwing a fit in the starting gate early on, not establishing the position early on that he wanted, by all accounts, Omaha Beach having a better trip than Improbable did. And by the way, Improbable had to make a little bit of a mid-move into the far turn so Omaha Beach didn't get too far ahead. Couldn't you make the case that Improbable ran every bit as well, if not better, than Omaha Beach? I'm not saying that he did. I'm just saying you need to play devil's advocate. Too many times I think people just get dyed in the wool. And particularly, and I don't mean this as a, as a proper sort of knockdown, but it, it, it's true. Many of the commenters beneath the YouTube video player, they are just, just tried and true fans or whatever, however you want to call them of one horse. And if you don't like that horse or you question anything, you're an idiot. Well, I think that's a terrible way to look at things, but your prerogative, do what you will. I just wonder if, if you could try to, if you wanted to make the case for improbable out of this race, I think you could. If you wanted to make the case for Omaha Beach out of this race, you very obviously can. Because to date, he's the fastest three-year-old. He's done impressive things. He has top-level connections. He's proven that he can ship. He can handle a wet track. He can handle a fast track. There's really nothing that this horse hasn't done yet. And he continues to take those steps forward. And I love that it's incremental. It's not these giant 15, 20-point jumps. It's five, six at a time. He's up to a 101 now. Um, is it possible that he takes another step forward the first Saturday in May with added ground, which he should appreciate based on the way that he finished, galloped out very well. Um, again, all around, to me, there's nothing to knock about this effort from Omaha Beach. If you were so inclined to play devil's advocate or you wanted to take the other side, I think you could make an argument for improbable. Um, as far as the rest of the field is concerned, Long range toddy, he backed up a little bit when the real running began. Um, I was, I, you know, I said it in the stakes preview and I said it in this pod last week, the preview pod, you know, he paired up those buyer tops leading into the Rebel when he won last time out. I wondered if that was his forward move. Now, perhaps this is a little bit of a regression uh, and he can rebound at some point, but, um, you know, he's a nice horse. Don't get me wrong. I think he does need to improve. Uh, Country House, he's in the Derby. He's got enough points now. He, he ran a little bit more of a complete race this time around, but boy, when you're so far behind, he broke a little bit slowly again, and he was out on the better part of the track, if you believe the outside's where you wanted to be. You know, you're going to be giving up so much ground, or so much of a head start to a horse like Omaha Beach, to a horse like Improbable, to a horse like Game Winner, that, you know, I, I just have a difficult time, unless it's just a, a preposterous pace in the Derby. I just have a hard time imagining him being a horse that's going to win. Maybe he's one that can round out your, your tries and your supers. And again, the super on, on Derby Day, generally a very, very fruitful wager. Uh, one that many people kind of circle the calendar and say, this is the big bet of the year for us. Uh, maybe he's one you want to use underneath. Laughing Fox, I thought he came with an honest bid. He, he and Country House, I thought they finished kind of the same. Um, so I don't really know that there's anything else to go into there. The only other horse that I'd throw out there that you want to just, in my opinion, draw a line through this race for is Gray Attempt because he doesn't want to go this far. He, keep him sprinting, please, because he's much better doing that than he is anything else. Uh, but you're looking at two of the, and, and again, that's the other thing too, improbable He's going to be one of the one of the choices in this race in the Kentucky Derby. Um, maybe he's not the favorite of the second choice, but maybe he's fourth choice or fifth choice. I can't imagine him being anything more than twelve to one. Um, but you might be looking at the favorite here in Omaha Beach. He has done nothing wrong here ever since they have moved him to the main track. Who knew? When you see this pedigree, you would think turf is where he's going to make his 
make his hay? Well, it seems like the main track is working quite well for him. Uh, Omaha Beach, a very impressive winner of this year's Arkansas Derby. It is on to Louisville, and there's a chance, a real chance, that Omaha Beach is going to be your post-time favorite for the Kentucky Derby here in a few weeks for Richard Mandela. And Ryder, TBD. Might be Mike Smith, might be someone else. We'll find out in time. Omaha Beach, a 101 buyer speed figure, a 121 pace-adjusted time form U.S. rating winning the Arkansas Derby.